Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of our spotlight sessions for Boscov's Berks Jazz Fest. It's coming up ever so quickly. Um, the fest this year takes place in April, and we've been going behind the scenes a bit, sometimes with musicians and sometimes with the people that make it happen. And I have two gentlemen with us here at the People Chronicles who definitely make it happen. I have known uh-huh. both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen? <laughs> okay, we broke the ice. This is Stan Danner. <laughs> thank you for joining us. And Mark Burford, <laughs> thank you very much. I have known both of you, I can't even remember, I, f- forever it seems. Um, and actually, probably our first um, visits or, or acquaintances took place at the band shell. Yes. That's correct. Yes. Which, and, and I say that because I, I want to make the connection to how long you have been dedicated and volunteering untold hours to the arts in this community and then very specifically Jazz Fest. And it begs the question, why? Because it's a huge time commitment, a lot of energy and a lot of talent. So what brings you here? Well, basically, to be honest, he's the man. Mark (laughs) is the man, seriously. (laughs) Nothing would go down for arts council stuff with jazz and the band show without him. That's he's, a true statement, but now say the why. Power. Say why. He is the power. He's the power he, behind. Literally, he's, he's the, the power, power behind everything. And, you know, like most people come to shows and they see the artists and they hear about the people who put the shows on. But the people who really do the work are guys like him. And him. Well, I'm just here to help. You know, I'm, that's my job. I help with that. Get things done. All right, let's clarify this. I think it, but you, you both are integral to making it happen. And Stan, I think you're mentioning that because you are literally the power. Yes, he is. You, I mean, you, you spent years with MedEd, I believe. Yes, and which is First Energy now. Right, right. But you brought all of that expertise, your professional expertise, and, and gave it to Jazz Fest. Yes, yes, I did. And you can't give all that expertise without volunteers like Stan to help implement that. That's correct. Uh, without you know uh, people like Stan and a couple others, um, things wouldn't really that would get done, but it would take a long time to get done. Mm-hmm. Stan's the kind of guy, you know, he gets people moving, and that's what I'd like, you know. He gets Otherwise, right off the stage every time I'm out there. <laughs> He's a mover, I'll tell you. He gets a, he gets people up and moving. You know, there's yes, he does. He there's works. no slacking going you guys on. Are making me sound like Simon Legree or something. No, 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 no. But this still begs the question, guys. Why Boscov's Burks Jazz Fest? Because it's a lot of time and energy you could give to a lot of things. So what is it about Jazz Fest that keeps bringing you back? Well, for me, I used to, but I still do travel to. Like different cities, different states, different countries to see jazz shows, mm-hmm. and when they start bringing them to this area, to me, it's like, hey, this is great. I don't have to go across the ocean, or I don't have to go 200 miles to see a show and then come back. You know, I have it in my own area, so I want to do everything I can to keep it here, to keep things going on, and the little contributions I make, you know, helps a little bit, I guess. Absolutely, it does. Well, I I've done it because um. I saw there was a need because uh, I came out of Scenic River days, starting, oh, my starting, goodness. Yeah. starting back yeah. there volunteering uh, with the um, applications for whatever electrical needs were, mm-hmm. uh, you know, required. So and then matriculated on up to uh, uh, City Park and the Jazz Fest because they were born out of Scenic River days after at its demise, mm-hmm. and it's been continuing ever since. Um, is is the um, the music part of the draw for you as it is for Stan? Um, yes, yeah, some of the musicians. I'm not you know thrilled with all music, all the music, but there's two types of music, mm-hmm. good and bad, and all the music that does come through here is good music. But I'm kind of you know particular because um, I was trained in classical music on piano, uh-huh. and um, I got to meet some. Musicians early in my life when I was young, like Al Gray, um, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Smith, when I was young, before the Jazz Fest even was thought about in Reading. Mm-hmm. So my interest was peaked way back when I was about maybe 10 years old. 
because I was following people like Dexter Gordon and uh, you know uh, Sonny Rollins, people wow. like that. Mm -hmm. And then when they said Dizzy Gillespie was coming to Reading, I made a point <laughs> to get down to see him because I figured, well, he's not going to be around here too much longer. And it was uh, a thrill to see him and uh, people like uh, Donald Patterson. He never played at any jazz fest, but he came to Reading. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the best organ players I ever heard. And uh, many others. I can't mention them all. But, Charles uh, Early. Charles Early. Early. He was but, there. Uh, he put on a great show. Yes, he did. Fantastic. And there was um, used to be a, what was the hotel at 7th and Franklin there? The Grand, the Grand, hotel. Grand hotel. Many famous musicians came through there. When the railroad was very active, a lot of famous musicians came through there. So the only way I got to hear those musicians, I guess I was about eight or nine, I could get in with a shoe shine box. Oh, so okay. I got in and shined the shoes, made some money, and heard some of the best musicians in the world. So that's what piqued my interest. And um, I'm still thrilled with the Burks Jazz Fest because um, it's something that highlights Reading, mm -hmm. Reading, Pennsylvania. I mean, we were on the map. When it was the Reading Railroad here, and then that went by the wayside. Now the Jazz Fest is one of the biggest in the country. It has, I'm making a statement, it has put us on the map, this yes. Jazz Fest. So we're yes. back on the map again. Yes. Stan, you've traveled, as you mentioned, everywhere mm. to see jazz festivals because you do this, you have an affinity for this music. It's your yes. cup of tea for sure. Well, he said he learned from when he was young. My brother was a musician. I mm. play with his brother. And my really? brother mm -hmm. played saxophone, and he had jazz all over the house. So I was like in the middle of listening to Jimi Hendrix and listening mm. to Dexter Gordon, you know. I was eclectic. My music tastes are very eclectic. I like all kinds of music. And like he said, there's only two kinds of music, good and bad. And that, that goes across every kind of idiom of music. Mm -hmm. No matter what it is, mm -hmm. there's good and bad in it. And our festival is different than most festivals because we have a diversification of music in yes. our festival, yeah. of jazz music. We have some straight ahead, though. I'll get on my little soapbox and say not enough. But we have some. <laughs> you guys listening to programmers? We have, <laughs> we have uh, smooth jazz. Mm-hmm. You know, so you can get just about what you want between right. the main shows and the shows that are in uh, small venues. There's a lot of very talented local musicians that actually get a wider audience during jazz fest because people from outside the area get to hear them. And that's another good thing. So I'm hearing a, a couple of things fr from both of you, and that is... You're going to give your time to this because the benefit, and the huge benefit, is is right. getting these very accomplished musicians right here in Reading. And then you mentioned small venues, which is another benefit. A lot of times when you go to see these musicians, you're in much larger, maybe arenas, but larger venues than we enjoy here. And so that um, the experience here is, is much more intimate with the musicians. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Definitely. Yes. Um, in terms of who comes, like, You've been involved from the very beginning, and I know it started as a weekend festival, and now it's a 10-day event. So along with the expansion of the length of time for the event, you had to expand the number of acts. Were there any that you just went, whoa, knock my socks off, look who's coming to town? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. Even from the very beginning, went in Marcellus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From the very, yeah, very yeah, first yeah, yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Right, and... Uh, um. I just can't remember half of them. There's so many it, of them. It is a so tough one. Many, you, you guys know? work backstage, though, right. with, at, at, these, at these events. So it's a different feel backstage than it is when you're in a chair in the audience and watching the show. You get to commune on a different level with the artists. What's the reception? Uh, any surprises there? Oh, there's always a surprise, you know. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> some of the musicians are down to earth. Mm -hmm. Some of them are divas. Some of them are prima donnas and you know they come in all different spectrums you know they're very good at what they do but some of their personalities you know could be desired sometimes but um it's <laughs> which like, means they're people just like the rest of us that's right, right you know they might uh, some people want a certain glass to drink a certain bottle of water out of or you know things like that that you notice oh what kind of person is that they need that certain glass with that certain bottle of water i heard so. there was and i don't remember the artist so i'm not telling tales but a, on, on one occasion a, a demand to have a piano in the room so practice could be done before they went on stage yes, there was mm -hmm. one of them mm -hmm. yeah there was a lot of strange stuff going on <laughs> 
<laughs> See, I deal probably more closely with the artist than Mark does. Yes, he does. You know, because I... What's well, been most surprising for you in that experience? That uh, a lot of the people that you think are, you know, going to be divas, they're not. They're uh -huh. like really nice people. And then some people who, even during the course of working at this festival, some people came in early in the very beginning, and they were the nicest people in the world. And then all of a sudden, they got a little notoriety, and then they oh. changed. Mm -hmm. And I got a couple of names, but I'm not going to say them. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, like, that's not. They have changed. Yeah. And now they have, like, this persona. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just got to take them to the side and say, come on, man, I know back when you were so-and-so and, -so and you were doing this, so I don't want to hear that. You know, you're the same person to me. Because the problem with my dealing with people is I am outspoken. I will tell you what I think about you. It's not necessarily a problem, though. No, it's it is. Forthright. Sometimes sometimes it's a problem because, uh, you know, I don't have that filter where you try to be PC all the time. Really? No. <laughs> I, I don't, Stan I don't, speaks what's on his yeah, mind. Yeah, I he speak does. what's Believe on me. my mind. You know, I, I try to hold back sometimes, but then you get to the point where it's like, no, man, we got to stop and we got to say what, you know, what the real deal is because mm -hmm. some people try to take advantage of you because they think that they are more than you are. Mm-hmm. And it's not. They, they can't have a show without us. That's right. You guys run, essentially, I think, the Scottish Rite. That's your home theater in terms of... He's everywhere. I'm, I'm all over the place. All I'm over the, the place. Scottish Rite. That's my home theater. But I help out everywhere else. Mm -hmm. You used to be at a lot of different places. I and still then it's am. like, Oh, okay. So there's not a home base necessarily. Well, the Scottish Rite is my venue. I'm the stage manager at the Scottish Rite. But I do... When I'm not there, I do stuff here. I do stuff wherever Gary tells me to go. And don't we all? <laughs> Gary tells you go there, you better get there. There is a lot that goes on behind stage, and without all of that that the audience never sees, there wouldn't be a front stage, and there wouldn't be a hugely successful Boscov's Brooks Jazz Fest, because I hear, and you guys need to know this, I do get to um, have conversations with musicians, mm -hmm. and repeatedly and unanimously, we are treated so well. The team here really knows how to put on a show. So that's a big kudos to your efforts, and I'm really glad that you do it and share that time here. Thank you. Quite welcome. You're quite welcome. My pleasure. And there is another edition of the Boscov's Brooks Jazz Fest Spotlight here on The People Chronicle. <laughs>